A major Nintendo Switch E3 leak has been confirmed. What does it say about other things that were leaked on the same document? And what game is it? Crackdown 3 has been delayed once again. When is it coming out? And is it time to start thinking about putting this on the successor to the Xbox One? Finally, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee get some details on the controls, and some people might not be happy with the decision made. All that plus a whole lot more on the Friday, June 8th edition of RGT News. Let's go! RGT. So yes, a major Nintendo Switch E3 leak that we talked about previously on the channel was of course this interesting document that popped up online. It had games like Dragon Ball Fighter Z on it, Fortnite, and another game on that list was Paladins. Now of course we've talked about Fortnite pretty much being confirmed for the Nintendo Switch at this point, with an update for the game appearing in the source code of the eShop. But now Paladins has been fully confirmed as coming to the Nintendo Switch, and will be launching on June 12th for the Switch. What's interesting about this version? of Paladins is that it will have cross-platform play with Xbox One and PC, and the game will run at 60 frames per second. Now, if you're not familiar with Paladins, it's actually a game that I played a good bit on the Xbox One. I used to play it with a friend, and we'd always have a good time. The way the game works is sort of similar to Overwatch. You have a bunch of different characters you can choose from, all with strengths and weaknesses. There's a payload in the middle of the map, and basically what you're trying to do is get to this payload and move the payload from the middle of the map to the other team's base. You you do this by basically essentially capturing the payload and standing near it as it moves along and wiping out people that come along and try to take you out. It's a really fast, stylish, and fun game, and a game that I definitely have enjoyed playing. And it's a game that I haven't played actually in quite a while, so I'm looking forward to playing this game when it comes to the Nintendo Switch. It's a great fit for the system, and of course this E3 leak now being confirmed pretty much shows that everything we saw on that E3 document is true. Of course, like I previously mentioned, Fortnite is pretty much confirmed so that means Dragon Ball Fighter Z will be coming to the Nintendo Switch as well and we probably will be seeing that at E3. Definitely a hype time for Nintendo Switch owners some really good games coming down the pipeline and Paladins is a really fun game that I highly suggest you guys check out. Let me know in the comments section down below if you've ever checked out Paladins before and if you have what you think about the game and if not if you will be checking out Paladins when it launches on the Nintendo Switch on June 12th. One of Sony's E3 games, of course, is Days Gone, which is a game that has been delayed until 2019. The zombie survival horror game looks pretty interesting. It's definitely an open world sort of zombie game, but people felt as the game was being shown off at subsequent E3s that maybe it needed a little bit more polish. Well, now Days Gone has an official release date of February 22nd, 2019. Now, this game will still be on the E3 2018 show floor as they will be showing off this game and presumably letting players play the game on the E3 show floor. Days Gone is a game that I'm not quite sure on. I'm not really sold on it yet. I definitely want to see some more gameplay as I feel that we've pretty much just seen sort of cinematics from the game and maybe not the game at its core, how it's actually going to play. And with State of Decay 2 being a bit of a disappointment, I think people are looking for a good zombie game and Days Gone could be that zombie game. But now it has an official release date. So February 22nd, 2019, you could pick up Days Gone on your PS4. Are you looking forward to Days Gone? Do you want to see it on the E3? show floor and are you looking forward to seeing more from this game let me know in the comment section down below so when it comes to the controls in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, this may split the fan base even more because it seems like they're going with mandatory motion controls for the game. In a statement released in a handheld mode with both Joy-Con attached, you are still required to move around to aim and press a button to throw the Pokeball. It is not a touch screen like on a smartphone because the Switch is quite heavier than your phone. So basically what that's saying is there's going to be gyro controls as far as you aiming where your Pokeball goes and then you press a button. Now, that'll be very interesting to see if that's mandatory mandatory or not because it looks as of right now that it is mandatory which would sort of take away the ability to use a pro controller as the way to play the game I can't really imagine them doing that and making it mandatory but it does seem like it could be the case with this game so would that sort of turn you off if there are mandatory gyro controls sort of shoehorned in to make a more interactive Pokemon experience or do you like that let me know in the comments down below because I think it's sort of gonna split 
the fan base a bit and I think people are going to be split on this decision. Many E3 lineups are coming out now that we are just a mere few days away from the event and Capcom has released what they will be showing on the E3 show floor and obviously it's pretty much stuff we already knew about. Mega Man 11 will be making an appearance, the Mega Man X Legacy Collection Parts 1 and 2 will also be there, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, and Street Fighter 5 Arcade. Now Street Fighter 5 Arcade obviously is already out so that'll be more just for tournaments and stuff like that but it's interesting to see two different Mega Man games on E3 for Capcom. Are they sort of turning over a leaf here and embracing their roots and their classic franchises again? I don't know. That's pretty cool though. I think that says volumes about the company and maybe the direction they're going in. I'm of course definitely interested to see Monster Hunter Ultimate or Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate as that is a game I'm looking forward to playing on the Nintendo Switch when it launches in August. So it should be a decent E3 from Capcom. Maybe they'll have some surprises up their sleeve as well. A lot of people are hoping that the Resident Evil 7 Classic Cloud Edition somehow makes its way to the States, so that would be good to see as well, but so far so solid, throw in a few surprises, and Capcom could end up having a really decent E3, which is kind of surprising considering it's Capcom. A game that I recently reviewed and absolutely loved was Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, a throwback to the 2D Castlevania games on the NES. It was an absolutely fantastic experience, and it looks like I am not alone in loving that game. Inti Creates, the company behind the game, has announced that the game has sold over 100,000 copies already across all platforms. But what's really interesting is when they break down the sales per system to see where the biggest fan base for this game is. The Switch comes in at 56% of all units sold. Steam comes in at 19%, the PlayStation 4 at 17%, the Nintendo 3DS at 4%, and the PlayStation Vita at 4%. So Switch owners really gravitated towards this game. It's a 2D style Castlevania game, and it's awesome. It's just a fantastic game. If you have not bought it, it is literally like the best $10 you could spend. Go check out my review on the game after watching this video, because it's a fantastic game. This also sort of leads me to believe that we definitely could be seeing Castlevania come to us on the Nintendo Switch from Konami. I made a video a couple days ago talking about the possibility of that as Konami will have Nintendo Switch products on the E3 show floor. But showing these data, this numbers and this data, 56% of Switch of the sales of the game were on the Nintendo Switch. So obviously Switch owners want Castlevania style games. So Konami, the ball's in your court now, but hats off to any creates fantastic game. You guys definitely deserve awesome sales for it. And finally, another rumor has been confirmed. Crackdown 3 has been delayed once again. What was supposed to be a cornerstone for Microsoft in 2018 is now delayed until February 2019 and will be going up against Days Gone on the PS4. In a statement released by Sumo Digital, our fans' response to the signature antics and explosive gameplay of Crackdown 3 has been incredible. To ensure we deliver the experience they deserve, Crackdown 3 will be launching in February 2019. Unfortunately, I think this time, the time for this game has really come and gone. It's been in development for years now, nearly six years, and there's been multiple studios working on this game. It's obviously something at the core of the game that is not working. Something is off about this game. There is a big problem with Crackdown 3. A game should not really take this long to be coming out. What about that Miyamoto quote where a rush game is always bad, but a game that takes forever could end up being good? I call bull on that because look at Duke Duke Nukem Forever. It was definitely a huge disappointment and it was a game that was in development for forever. All because you delay the game doesn't necessarily mean you can fix the core problems of it. What is really a few more months going to do that's going to fix whatever problems are ailing this game? It's been delayed multiple times. I honestly feel like it's start it's time to start looking at this for the successor of the Xbox One. The Xbox One 2, I guess you're going to call it. Or maybe just the Xbox 2. Because really, I feel like the window for this game has passed. And it's very unfortunate for Xbox One owners like myself. Because what else is there for the rest of the year now? Crackdown 3 was the big first party IP that was supposed to be releasing in 2018 for the Xbox One. And now that this is taken off the table, Microsoft is really going to have to have a strong E3 to instill customer and consumer consumer confidence in the company because as of right now I feel like it has to be at an ultimate low it's definitely a big blow to the Xbox one and I think a lot of fans are going to be disappointed by this let me know in the comments section down below if you are disappointed by crackdown being delayed until 2019.
All right, and that's going to do it for the Friday, June 8th edition of RGT News, the last RGT News before all of the E3 hoopla. Now, obviously, we're going to be covering a ton of E3 stuff on the channel, so if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. There's going to be live streams. I'm doing stuff with Spawn Wave at his house. We're going to have all sorts of stuff. There's going to be reactions, news videos. I honestly probably will not sleep this upcoming week, but that's a good thing in my opinion because I'm going to have so much content for you guys. It's going to be a very fun time. There's going to be live streams like I said so make sure you guys are subscribed make sure all your notifications are turned on so you can get live alerts of when I'm going live and uploading videos on said subjects on E3 and thank you guys for checking out this video thank you guys for your amazing support the channel continues to or the channel continues to grow and I'm just absolutely blown away by it I love all you guys and I will catch you guys on the next video later Take it